this is the topic for the day. The, how do you write functions in R, your own user defined functions? So, statistical functions, so R comes with its own set of statistical functions, of course. Uh, statistics is where R started its life with. So, you have a plethora of uh, statistical functions in R. Uh, we start with mean and you say my data dollar h. So, my data is a data frame. When you pick a column out of my data or when you pick a row out of my data, it returns a vector of that particular row or particular column. And that vector is then passed to this function and this is the output of the function. The same with median, standard deviation, variance. So these are mathematical function. There's a function called quantile of my age. Quantile is a function. Uh, I'm not sure everybody is aware of what quantile in statistics means. It is basically finds out the first value, the 25th value, the 50th value, the 75th value, and 100th value. If you take this data and sort it in ascending order, it's going to find values at each of these intervals and give you this value. So, uh, I would cover some statistic functions in brief in, in one of the later classes. But until then, then you can just part this question of if you have an uh, issue understanding these uh, statistical functions. Moving on to the next one, uh, we just saw all the statistical functions. You can also write, uh, there is a function called summary. A summary is a function which is pretty important in R because you can pass any kind of, it is the same way like you have structure, we say str, same way you can do a summary function on any variable that is there and depending on the type of variable, it will give you uh, some information about the variable. So if the, if the value that you're looking for is a number, it gives you the minimum value in the whole data set, the maximum value, what is the mean, median, the first quartile and the third quartile. It kind of gives you, let's say, I'm looking at age and I want to look at okay, what kind of values are there in this uh, age thing, and this is what it will give you. If it is a factor variable, it will talk, it will give you the top five or six factors that are there, how many records are there with those factors. So you kind of start understanding uh, what the data looks like, and we will be using this summary in a lot of our examples to understand uh, how many data that, uh, that we have in R would look like. You can use within any of these while statement or repeat statement, you have switch statements. So they all work pretty much the same way if you use any other programming language like Java or C. It works the same way. All you have to remember is, okay, what is the syntax for using these particular statements? Uh, pretty straightforward. And uh, it is going to be helpful for you anytime you want to use them. Yeah. We will see some examples uh, going forward, but uh, there is nothing special about them. Pretty much the same thing you would have seen in your earlier uh, programming languages, whichever one you used. Functions in R, how do I define functions in R? So functions in R can be of two types. Uh, it can be user-defined functions, which is you create your own functions, and then you can use your function as a part of your code. Or there are built-in functions in R, which is what, when you're installing packages, you're getting a bunch of built-in functions. What is the syntax for creating a function? You say, this is how a function is created. Square is the function name. And to that, you assign a function body. And the function body is going to look like this. Use the, uh, the, the standard term called function. In the bracket, <coughs> sorry, you're passing all the input variables to the function. In this case, the input variable is x. And there is an open square bra open curly braces or close curly braces inside which the function body is embedded. And it only is a simple function, which is just you're finding the square of a number. So you're passing this number x, and it's going x into x. And that value will be returned whenever you make the function call. So when it is square, there, this arrow mark symbol function fx in curly braces x into x. A function for computing square is created, and that function definition is stored in this variable called square. Then anytime you call square and pass a value, that function is going to be executed, and the result is going to be given you back. Now comes more interesting things in R. You can actually pass a vector to this particular function. Automatically, it will take each member of the vector and come apply this whole function and return back results for each of the member you're passing to. This is another interesting thing. This is one of the power of R. You defined your function. You didn't give any kind of looping structure in your function, but it automatically takes each member, applies the function to each member, and returns you back the values. So that's a pretty interesting and powerful feature about R. Uh, 
and uh, there is another function called repeat. Repeat function is basically to repeat a value x number of times. When I say repeat a 10 times, so it's going to repeat value n times. And repeated series, repeat 1, 2, 6, 2 times. So I'm going to repeat 1, 2, 2, 6, 2 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's an interesting. You can create these, all this whenever you want to create some data for yourself uh, for any kind of testing or stuff like that. Then you can have elements of the series to be repeated. So 1, 6, repeat 3, 6. So the repeat 1, 2, 3, repeat 1, 3 times, 2, 3 times, something like that. It, it has multiple ways by which you can keep calling them and then it can give you data like this. You know. This is some of the things you might want to create some dummy data if you want to play around with stuff. So that's another powerful thing that you want to see here. Sorting uh, are the interesting feature. How do you sort a data frame? Uh, there is a function called order you might want to use. The order function takes an input a specific column name and is going to sort. You want to do a reverse sorting, you call the function rev of order, which is going to show you the reverse sorting for you by that particular column that you're passing around. Here is a data frame. There is X and Y. First thing you do is order. Uh, you create first an index order of X. The index is going to come back with an index of how the ordering for data of X is going to be. And then you use that to again print how you want D to be. So when you say order of D of X, it's going to give you another vector which is sequenced, uh, which has values sequenced in the order of X. And then when you pass that index back to the order, is going to give you the values in that order. Pretty little confusing, but you might want to play around with it and then you will understand how it works. So order and rev of order are two functions you might want to use for ordering and for reverse ordering. C bind and R bind, uh, we saw it a little earlier. C bind you used to use to concatenate vectors. Uh, by columns to create a data frame. C bank can also be created by combine two data frames or a vector and a data frame, uh, whichever way you want to merge them into. R bind is for doing it by rows. C bind is by doing it by columns. Again, um, you might be using it to take some, you might be extracting data from multiple sources and using them to combine uh, based on uh, some common key and stuff like that. There are also functions for joining. There are also functions for aggregating and stuff like that also. So there are other functions you, you might want to you can use. There are a lot of powerful functions and libraries for man manipulating data frames. So Annie's question for applying the R-bind function, 